All right, guys, welcome back to the garage. We're just about to start another project on the 1970 Triumph TR6PI. And uh, as mentioned, one of the small projects I wanted to do along the way was to get the uh, air box or air plenum, whatever you want to call it, for the injection manifold uh, sorted out. So what I mean by sorted is I want to get this stripped down and painted back to its uh, factory black wrinkle paint. Originally, I'd said that I was going to go uh, to just a black satin paint, but I've uh, changed my mind and I've ordered the wrinkle paint. It's expensive, actually. It's uh, 40 bucks for a small can of wrinkle paint, and I'm hoping that it works out. A lot of times, the paint won't wrinkle as it should, but uh, we'll give it a go anyway. So we're just in the process of getting this cleaned up and stripped down. So first thing I'm doing here is re removing this support bracket and of course, we're going to bag and tag all the parts. So we're going to remove this, the uh, support bracket. We're going to remove the two hoses that are still left on this uh, plenum. And uh, then we'll start to strip it down by various means. I'm going to wire brush it. Um, I'm probably going to get a stripping disc as well. And uh, I thought I might even get, maybe give it a go at uh, sandblasting. I don't think I have any blasting media. I don't really want to you know, grab my or drag my cabinet out from un under here. So I thought I might do a bit of bucket blasting outside the door. But again, I don't think I have any media left. So we may just resort to stripping it with a wire wheel and with a uh, stripping disc. But we'll see how uh, how easy it is to do it with that. The uh, blaster certainly would get into the uh, little nooks and crannies a little bit better. But we'll see how we do by other means first before we break out the sand blaster or the media blaster whatever you want to call it. So there's a before shot of what it looks like. Pretty grimy, a little rusty on top here. So the, the plan is to do this in the wrinkle paint and then hopefully I'll be able to uh, sort of sand this area, this little embossed area with the Triumph logo. Hopefully I'll be able to sand that and just do a little, uh, little red highlight there and uh, probably have to hand brush that. We'll figure something out, but I think I want to do a little red uh, just to make it pop there as the original color of this car was red, and it will going, be going back to the original factory signal red. So anyway, that's a look at the uh, starting point on this project. Let's get to work stripping it. All right, guys, it's another day, and we're back on the, uh, I think they call this the air manifold assembly. If I look it up in the Haynes manual, it's called the air manifold assembly. So... Let's call it that. So as you can see, we've got it pretty much uh, cleaned up now all the way around. And uh, all I need to do now is go inside and clean this internally as it looks like it's got quite a bit of uh, old uh, oil residue inside. So we'll go inside and uh, probably break out some oven cleaner as well just to clean the uh, inside, the inner tubes of these. So we'll go ahead and spray that down with, uh, with oven cleaner. Clean that up the best as possible. Wipe it down with uh, soap and water, and then we'll come back out, do grease and wax remover, and we'll get ready to apply some paint. We've had the heat on for a few hours, trying to get it up to temperature in the garage so we can spray the paint today. My paint finally did come, this come in the uh, mail. This is the Wrinkle Plus paint from VHT. It's uh, flat black, so uh, believe it or not, 40 bucks for this little can. I think retail, it's about uh, 29 bucks if you can find it, so... Ended up having to get it off of Amazon, and it ended up being 40 bucks. So it is what it is. Paid the extra 10 bucks not to go to the hassle of trying to track it down somewhere locally. So um, anyway, we'll get ready to paint this today, hopefully. And uh, we got to get it cleaned up a little bit better before we get to that stage. So we'll go inside, scrub it down, and come back out. All right, back out in the garage, and we've got it all completely cleaned and scrubbed down now, ready for its uh, coat of paint. We did actually put it through a dry cycle in the oven, so there's no moisture left on the inside or in any of the nooks and crannies. So I think we're just about ready to uh, start painting. So we are using this, uh, as mentioned, this VHT uh, wrinkle paint. So apparently it is uh, three coats, very heavy coats of paint going in alternating uh, directions. So horizontal, vertical, and then across is what they want you to do. So, uh, and then apparently it wrinkles over a period of time. You can actually flash this in the oven, but apparently it makes the wrinkling 
smaller. So anyway, if this doesn't work out as far as the wrinkle paint is concerned, I think we're going to go back with our original plan of uh, semi-gloss black. But we'll give the wrinkle paint uh, a try. I've tried wrinkle paint in the past and haven't been really happy with the uh, results. So maybe it'll work better on this piece. So let's give it a shot. I'm going to turn you off. I'm not going to film me painting, but we will bring you back when it's done. All right, guys, quick look of it with the three coats applied. Pretty shiny for supposedly flat black, but I guess once it wrinkles, it'll start to go a little flat. Got a little bit of a run going on here. It's cold out in the garage. It's only 65. I have this little uh, heater going here as well. So not perfect. It looks a heck of a lot better than it did. So anyway, let's see if that wrinkles over time. Maybe it'll get rid of my run a little bit. So or it won't be so obvious once it's wrinkled. All right, we'll, we'll be back in a bit. All right, just came out to have a quick look at how the uh, wrinkling was doing, and it is definitely wrinkling, which is good. So uh, I'll probably do another uh, quick coat. There's a couple areas there I'm not real happy with, like that area there. Uh, I'm not completely happy. Again, it's only an hour, so who knows, it might, drink, might uh, dry up and wrinkle a bit more. So the plan is to uh, sand this embossed area down and highlight that with red. So hopefully that's going to work okay. But it's looking pretty good. It's uh, definitely wrinkled more on this side versus the uh, back side if I just sort of spin this around. So that's looking pretty good though. And obviously you don't see the bottom side. So I think it's looking okay. Keep spinning it around. All right, we'll let her go for another uh, hour at least before we even attempt to uh, handle it. Uh, like I said, we may want to spray a, another little sort of light dusting coat just to do a little bit more wrinkling in areas where it didn't seem to wrinkle properly. But it's looking pretty good. Looking pretty good, at least it wrinkled. Like I said, I haven't had too much success with wrinkle paint in the past. All right, we'll come back in another hour. All right, while the paint is uh, wrinkling on the uh, air manifold assembly, I figured I would bring the uh, metering unit control unit inside. So this is the metering unit. This is the control unit, is my understanding. So we're going to be uh, sending this off for refurbishment or recalibration, whatever you want to call it. So I figured I would take the injector piping off and we'll take this uh, pedestal piece off and uh, get it ready to be boxed up to be sent off, most likely to the UK, because there's not anybody that knows anything about these over on this side of the pond. All right, it's the next day, and we're on to the next part of the project. That's to actually sand off this area here to reveal the embossed Triumph logo below, and then we're gonna highlight that with some red paint, which will be the exterior color of the car. Yeah, it's not perfect. There are a few areas here that kind of, you know, dried a little funny. And then a little area over here. But all in all, it looks better than what it did. So anyway, not much I can do about that. I might be able to try to respray this area, see if it'll wrinkle up in a sort of different. But this little area here is definitely a like, little raised area. So I'm not sure that I'll be able to fix that or not unless I was to sand this all the way down again, which I'm not going to do. Anyway, I've got some masking tape. We're just going to mask around the outside of this. So when we're sanding it, we're going to sand it with a uh, flat block and some sandpaper. So we're just going to try to sand the top of this off to reveal the base metal underneath. And then we'll get a small brush and some red paint. And the red being the exterior color of this car. It will be the exterior color of this car. I'm just hoping it picks up a little bit of that as an accent. So that's the plan. So let's get the tape out, tape it off, sand it down, and uh, we'll come back after that. All right, a quick look of the uh, embossed area sanded down. So sand, or the tape ended up taking a little bit of the wrinkle off here. I'll probably just touch that up. And uh, anyway, we're going to break out the red paint and the small brushes, and we'll see how we do as far as hand painting this. Um, so we'll give it a shot. All right, guys, back out in the garage and on the workbench. And it's probably a good thing I did because there's quite a bit of old gas stuck within the body of the metering unit and within the injection piping. You can see I've got the piping off. I had to move back out to the garage because I couldn't get enough leverage on the coffee table to be able to get off the uh, off the fuel uh, injection piping. There was 
on there quite well. I'm sure they've never been off this uh, metering unit before. So anyway, that's ready to be uh, sent out. Uh, I was just taking a quick look at this. Uh, I guess this is the uh, fuel enrichment. So this is kind of like the choke on the uh, fuel injection cars. This in conjunction with another cable that goes to the uh, the linkage on the bottom of the manifold. So it's a two-strand or two um, two-piece cable arrangement on these cars. And my understanding is it's difficult or not difficult, or maybe it's difficult, but I know it's expensive to get these cables. So anyway, we'll look at uh, what we're going to do with that, because obviously this cable has been cut at some point in time. Who knows if that was even in use. So anyway, uh, we'll get this ready to be shipped out to the UK for a rebuild, refurb, whatever you want to call it. So that's one more little job done, and uh, we'll get that boxed up. All right, one last update on this project. As you can see, we've got the uh, the finished product in front of us. It's been sitting for about uh, 24 hours now, so everything is dry. You can see how the embossed area turned out. I think that looks pretty good. Not factory, but uh, I wanted to pick up the color of the car or the eventual color of the car. The car is blue currently, but it came from the factory as a signal red car. So we're hoping to uh, just highlight that a little bit. So. There's a few little areas that are not great. Again, we had that little one area there where there was, I think, a run initially, so it over-wrinkled a little bit. And for the most part, I think it looks okay. Um, down the bottom, there's another little area that's not great, but again, it's at the bottom, you'll never see it. So basically, I'm just more concerned about what you can see when it's on the car in this sort of orientation with the pipes coming off to the injection manifold. So yeah, so I think that looks pretty good much better than what we started with anyway and that's the whole point of this uh, restoration project so all right guys thanks for watching thanks for commenting and thanks for subscribing we'll see you on the next little project on the 1970 triumph tr6 pi